Okay, awesome. Hey guys, I want to welcome you guys back to Live Discussions with Dr. D. I have Representative Kimberl Garvin here. If you are just tuning in, then this is the second half of our live broadcast. Of course, with everything technology, sometimes it works, sometimes it works too it slow. <laughs> and so the first part of our interview is actually already posted on my page, D. Bell Williams. You can follow and I also post it on the Dr. D. Unlimited Facebook page as well. But we're going to continue in our interview and I'm going to ask um, Representative Garvin to jump right in there was something very critical that we were discussing that I really want him to share um, as it relates to the upbringing when you talked about sure. your mom yeah. changing the trajectory of her career yeah. can you tell us that story I, I sure I can sure. yeah I, I tell it to anybody that's willing to listen <laughs> uh, awesome. but um, so I was raised by a single mom um, and, and my mom at the age of five she decided well I was diagnosed with a speech impediment okay. so um, my mom decided to change the entire trajectory of her career to become a speech therapist. So at an early age, I really realized the importance of my voice. I realized that if I could, you know, use, you know, folks say, well, what's your talent? You know, I, I don't play an instrument, I don't play and I don't sing. <laughs> but I realized that if I could use my voice to speak out about issues that matter to my community and that matter to the folks that I represent, you know, anywhere I go, um, I've realized I can make the world a little bit better from my having been here. And I think that's that's that that's that's, that's really key and that's really crucial. I think we each really have to think about life's so short. Right. Um we, we really have to think about what are we leaving, you know, when we're no longer here. You know? That is so good. Uh, and so at twenty seven years old, I'm already thinking about what am I leaving when, when I'm no longer here? And I think that we all have to, you know, of course, nobody wants to think about their mortality, no. But I think that long term, as we move forward within our lives, I think that we'll live our lives a little bit differently. Absolutely. If we're thinking about, you know, the long term and not just, you know, the short term, um, you know, views. That's actually really good. And it's a perfect segue into my next question. Again, thank you. Thank you to everyone who's um, uh, joining in and you can probably catch this live again. We have the first part has already been posted and, and we're kind of going towards the second half of this interview. But I have Representative Kimberly Garvin. He's sharing, you know, the power of your vote. And I'm glad he connected with the power of your voice because yeah. I actually did that interview. Um, I did it with uh, Rashonda Pratt yeah. last week. Excellent. And uh, we talked about the power of your voice. Mm -hmm. And so very important in the African-American community. Mm -hmm. um, we have a big election coming up. Um, we have midterm elections, you mm -hmm. know, that we've been talking about. Mm -hmm. But there is something that's happening um, in conversation mm -hmm. that I want to talk about. Sure. Um, of course, I talk to a lot of people, mm -hmm. different backgrounds. Mm -hmm. And um, in our community, there is also this dialogue happening amongst African-Americans that our votes don't matter. Mm -hmm. Um, there are people who are saying, I'm not going to vote. Um, mm -hmm. um, I don't believe what the candidates are saying. Yeah. You know, it's not going to help our people mm -hmm. and um, different things of that nature. Like, what do you have, you know, as a, as a African-American, a 27-year-old man who mm -hmm. is sitting in um, the House of Representatives um, because you decided to use your voice. Mm -hmm. What do you say to people who are saying right. that there's no power in our sure, vote, that, sure. that we shouldn't vote because it doesn't benefit us? Absolutely. Great question. Uh, you know, I'm, I am a, a child of the NAACP, and, and it sounds like you are as well, Dr. D. And so I know the history. I'm a student of history. And, and so I recognize the power of our vote. I recognize that our vote is so powerful that folks try to take it you know, from us by you know, enacting you know, voter suppression techniques. You know, how many bubbles are in a bar of soap? How many marbles are in a jar? You know, there are folks that got out there and that protested, and you know this already, Absolutely. that protested, you know, that were, were close down, you know, you know, that were beaten, that were hoes, that were bitten by the dogs, Absolutely. you know, and so when somebody tells me, African Americans more specifically tell me that, you know, well, my vote doesn't count or both candidates are just as bad, uh, you know, or, you know, I, I, I take offense to that because although we can't blindly give our loyalty to any party, Correct. I don't think we should do that. I think that we also have to recognize the party that, or the individuals that must best reflect and represent our interests. There's a saying that goes as a community, we don't have you know, permanent friends, we have permanent interests. And so I think that we've got to look at the people that represent our permanent interests and support them. Uh, you know, there's, you know, Folks, some folks go out and they vote for third party candidates as protest votes, or they write in, you know, Mickey Mouse as protest votes. You know, but at the end of the day, 
a President Hillary Clinton would have been exponentially better than President Donald J. Trump. Uh, and and so in regards to civil rights, in regards to policing, in regards to just a whole wide, you know, range of of things, Uh, you know, the Supreme Court, you know, I talked about this a little bit earlier. And so when folks tell me that, you know, I I think it's it's problematic. And I also want to say to all your South Carolina listeners, we are privileged to be the third uh, primary state in the Democratic Party. You know, we are the first state that has a significant amount of diversity. Iowa and New Hampshire are both extremely white states. Mm -hmm. South Carolina is the first state that has a a, a large African-American population, a minority population, and then Nevada has a large Hispanic population, and they come after us. We can really set the bar for all of these candidates in South Carolina because folks are going to look at how you do here in our state to determine how you're going to fare in Mississippi in Alabama, you know, in places that have large African-American populations. So I think we've got to take this responsibility seriously. Yeah. Uh, we are we are really setting the bar. Absolutely. Because we're showing who's valuable within our community. Absolutely. And so when we don't take that opportunity and that responsibility serious, seriously, I think that we're doing a disservice to, to the process. And, uh, and I just encourage everybody to, to, to get out there and vote uh, for the folks that represent your interests. That's very good. I mean, I that was such an eloquent explanation and of the power of your vote. Um, it's, it's going into you know my question about this whole um, 2020 election and, mm-hmm. and where South Carolina sits because I don't know if you all have been paying attention. Those of you who have been viewing the news, that if you notice that a lot of the candidates have been coming through South Carolina very frequently um, in the last couple of weeks. Mm-hmm. And um, Kim Brown has given us a, a, an excellent explanation of why. So if you are um, an African American and you are um, in South Carolina, please Think about the interests that you have and make those interests, um, when, you're, when you're looking at the different candidates, make sure that the interests match. It's not about the individual, but it's about the collective of who we are. So I'm, I'm so glad that you shared that because I was going to ask, you know, like the importance of South Carolina. Yes. That was like going to be my next yes. question in this 2020 election. Mm-hmm. And, and, and he shared, you know, about the dynamics of um, how diverse we are right. here as a state and how yeah. we get to set the tone right. for this next election. Like, I really don't think yeah. y'all um, really understand the importance. Like African Americans and the state of South Carolina we get to set the tone for this next election. Right. So really let that sink in as you are deciding on, you know, as you're following the candidates, as you're following their campaign trail, think about the things that you're interested in and look at how best they fit those interests. I love how you explain Thank that. Thank you. Thank you. Very good. You can go ahead. Well, no, just a, one last point on that and, and not much more to say about it. Uh, Hillary Clinton really benefited from having the buffer um, that, that she found amongst African American voters. And so I say that to simply say, you know, we do have a, uh, a lot of influence, a lot of power, in, not just in South Carolina, but throughout the South as a whole to really shape how the process works. So when folks are, are cynical and say that, that their vote doesn't matter, I, I promise you it does. Very good. It oh, matters. And let me make another point, as a matter of fact. So in my, in my original primary race, I was, like I said, I was running against an incumbent. There were four of us in the race. The incumbent had seven more votes than I did in the primary. So that means that had that been the end of it, like some states just have a primary and winner winner take all, and that would have been the end of that process. Seven votes. Seven votes. And so we had a runoff afterwards, and, and the rest is history. But I will always use that as an example of how Every vote counts. Every single You know, so, you know, somebody could, you know, although this wasn't the case here in South Carolina, but in some places, a person could win a race with seven more votes than than their opponent. And so I just encourage folks to recognize that every vote counts. And when I hear folks, you know, say that their vote doesn't matter, I will always remind them of that seven vote difference. And how, you know, seven, seven more folks to come, you know, it can really truly change things. And, and that's as such an excellent example because that's a household. Yeah, it's a household. <laughs> exactly. It's a household. Mom, dad, kids, right. house kids, you know, it is. Right, it's, it is. it's, it's a household. Yes. So um, just to let you know just how significant it is, yes. like um, seven is not a lot. No. 
No. But it can make or break a decision. That's right. So every vote really does matter. And I, right. I really, you know, want to share that as a, a historical kid myself, right. you yeah. know, like you said, we're NAACP babies. That's so right. we, right. we truly understand the, the historical value That's right. of the African-American vote. And so we always sure. want to encourage those who are watching that. Again, your vote does matter. Right. Um, Kim Brown, I, I really, really appreciate this interview. This is phenomenal. Um, again, for those of you all watching, to catch the first half of this, you have to go to my page. It's already out there. We kind of um, did the second half on, on the live stream here. We had a couple technical difficulties, but we're good. Um, I'm learning this thing. <laughs> but I want to thank Representative Garvin for coming and allowing me to, well, actually, I'm in his office. <laughs> I'm actually in his space. But thank you for coming on the channel and, you know, sharing with the viewers the importance of their vote, the importance of them being active and engaging um, in political awareness and sure. um, in, in, in political affairs, especially locally. Absolutely. Um, and, and I think I, I do want to um, get you to talk about that um, before we leave because, you know, I kind of harped a little bit on, like, the national elections. Sure. You, you talked a little about in the previous broadcast about, you know, your upbringing. Sure. But I really want you to, um, you know, share with our viewers as, as we close out mm -hmm. the importance of getting involved Absolutely. locally. Absolutely. Well, to all your viewers that are listening and watching today, I think that you're a perfect example uh, and uh, somebody that, you know, that wants to make a difference in the community and that's really getting out there and engaging folks. So if you want a, a, a prototype, this, this is it, Dr. D herself in true form. Uh, and so I said that to simply say, it, whether you're Campbell Garvin or whether you're D. Williams, your, your listeners, anybody watching later, they can be the change that they want to see as well. Uh, whether that's at the local level by running for office or whether that's doing a podcast or whether that's calling your congressman, whether that's protesting. You know, activism it comes in so many different forms. It, it can even be writing a, you know, a check you know, to causes that you support. Uh, and so I encourage folks to take the initiative you know, to be unafraid to step out and, and shake the world up and make the world better for your having been here. Because at the end of the day, like they say before, what matters the most on your tombstone is not the year that you were born, the year that you died, but it's that dash. It's that dash. <laughs> so make your dash count. And I'm making my dash count. I'm trying, and I think you are as well, Dr. D. Awesome. And thank you for what you're doing, and thank you for coming in this morning. Absolutely. Thank you so much. I appreciate that. Um, to my viewers, I think, I mean, that wraps it up. I mean, make your dash count. Yeah. And within that dash is your vote. Yeah. And it does matter. It does. It definitely does matter. It doesn't matter your age, you know, your gender, mm -hmm. uh, um, even your um, ethnic or racial background. That's right. You can make a difference. We're focused on African Americans mm -hmm. in this particular uh, live because, of course, it's African American mm -hmm. History Month, mm -hmm. and we definitely want to pay homage to our ancestors mm -hmm. um, by being the change that we want to see. Uh, Kimbrell is here. I'm here because of our forefathers and, right. and our foremothers, those that, you know, went before us. So definitely make sure you get out here, you know, become active, whether it's financially, whether it's socially, um, however you decide to engage is very, very important. So I want to thank you all for watching again. Um, and again, thank Representative Certainly. Garvin for being here. Um, enjoy the rest of your day, guys. And remember, your vote matters. Have a wonderful day and we'll see you soon. Take care.